So this is a trip from uh, the camp that we set up just off of Trona Road off of uh, RM44. That's about a little over three miles uh, east on Trona Road from the intersection of Trona Road and Highway 395. Uh, it's Pete and uh, Kevin and myself. We're going to head up to the uh, Walsh cabin. Uh, so we followed RM44 and, and went uh, across uh, and underneath Highway 395. Uh, at that point, we, uh, we jumped on EP-253 and uh, stayed on EP-253 and, until we got to uh, EP-146, which is the road that goes up into the uh, Narrows. Right before we got to uh, EP 146, this uh, trail got pretty uh, soft. You can see here uh, exactly what happened uh, when I got too close to the uh, edge of the uh, of the trail. Covered me in and the quad totally with the soft uh, silt. Uh, so this is the beginning of EP 146. Uh, this is a big wide uh, sand wash, you know, sort of a gravel sand wash. Uh, but uh, as you go further north, uh, it's going to get narrower and narrower, and then. Uh, we're actually going to go through a little section called the Narrows and, and head, it, uh, head up into the canyon. So we're just about to the uh, section called uh, the Narrows. Uh, this can be moderately easy or it can be really difficult depending on uh, the conditions of, of the trail here. And uh, a lot of times this is used for uh, four-wheel drives and Jeeps. Uh, and when they get to this point right here where I'll be stopping, uh, uh, depending again on the conditions, they they can use their uh, their four-wheel drives and get up into there, but they often dig a pretty uh, pretty big hole right here. Um, but this time, uh, not too bad. We're able to, to stick it in the quad into four-wheel drive and go right up and over uh, these rocks. So Pete uh, got a little ahead of us, and uh, Kevin doesn't have a radio, so uh, he wasn't exactly sure. He'd never been here before if he was going in the right direction. So I just told him to keep on going, and Pete would stop at the, uh, the turnoff uh, towards EP-15. Uh, again, uh, this section is uh, it's kind of cool. I just have to be a little careful because there's, there's rocks, uh, pretty big ones, uh, across the entire trail. So this sand wash actually goes uh, quite a ways, uh, EP-146. Eventually, it's going to come to an intersection with EP 433. Uh, you can go uh, east or west there. If you go west, it's going to take you towards the El Paso Mountains. Um, it also dead ends at EP 26, which uh, goes ahead. To, if you take a right turn there and go north, it'll take you around the, the wilderness and eventually take you out on Highway 14. Uh, if you go uh, if you go uh, south on that trail and make a left turn on EP 26, it'll take you back into the center of the, the El Paso Trail system. Uh, more towards the Bickle Camp and, and Burl Schmidt Mine. So we're going to turn uh, left here on EP 159, climb this little hill, get out of the sand wash, and uh, it's pretty easy, except there is one section here that's uh, kind of a little steep and a little rocky, so uh, you'll see Kevin has a little problem there. Uh, but overall, uh, again, somebody on a quad uh, should have no problem uh, getting up this. It's going to take us up to a, a valley, and uh, off to the right will be the Holland Camp, and we're not going to visit that today. Uh, and then uh, we'll basically take a uh, uh, EP-15 uh, through the mountains, and and connect to EP26 and then head over to Colorado Camp. So 
So Kevin just got a little uh, too far on the left side of the trail. He got a little high sided there and fell over because he didn't have no momentum. But he's fine and uh, he did fine the rest of the way up the trail. We travel across this valley, you can't see it, but off to the right is the Holland Camp. Well, originally, uh, was owned by Burrow Schmidt, uh, sold it, and then uh, basically uh, it was a, uh, a camp for a, uh, the Apache copper mine uh, in the 1930s, but didn't get a, didn't get a lot of ore out of the uh, mine, and uh, I don't think it lasted very long. Right now, it's just a set of uh, one big building with like three separate rooms. Not really sure what it was used for. Uh, some people actually say it may have been a garage. So the trail uh, actually uh, turns into EP11 and then you know, for a short while and then uh, actually changes again back to EP15 as it seems like every trail in the El you know, Paso is, is EP15. It's going to take us through this uh, little canyon, a couple nice areas here, and then we're going to drop onto EP26, that trail that borders the El Paso wilderness. and. We're going to head south towards the Colorado camp. We actually come through here a little earlier in the year uh, during the spring and late winter. Uh, get this beautiful red uh, clay rock and uh, also a lot of greenery. Uh, so um, it's a little bit later right now, so it's not as green as it, it normally is. But this is a sort of just a real easy uh, four-wheel drive road and a um, good place to just sort of sit back and enjoy the, enjoy the terrain and the scenery. So along the trail here, there are two or three different trails that uh, branch off either to the right or the left. Uh, a couple of them are on the trail maps, but uh, most of them aren't. Uh, I've actually never taken any of them, so can't comment on where they go. But uh, might be a fun place to, to go exploring one day and, and see actually uh, where those uh, side trails go. I don't remember, but uh, this must be a Saturday because very rarely do you see anybody uh, up here. And uh, we've got this first group of, uh, of two-wheel dirt bike riders. And then uh, a little later on, we're going to come across a, a group of uh, four-wheel drives uh, that are up uh, also in the same area. It's one of the advantages of having the uh, two-way radios. Uh, Pete was able to tell me uh, to expect uh, these riders, uh, both the, the dirt bikes and the trucks.
right over the crest of this hill. We're actually going to merge directly onto EP26. Uh, again, uh, it's, uh, it's just a sort of natural turn to the left. Uh, if you go right right here, you'll actually uh, head back uh, towards uh, Highway 395, or you can go straight north and follow the uh, fence line of the El Paso Wilderness. Here come the four wheelers that uh, Pete radioed me about. So I'm just going to pull off the road here and let them all pass. I think there's uh, there's either four or five of them uh, in total. So we've uh, reached Colorado Camp. Uh, I figured Pete would stop here for a beer break. Uh, Colorado Camp was apparently established in the 1890s, and it's rumored to be uh, either a location that had a gold mine or or a coal mine. Um, but either way, it uh, basically uh, seemed to survive for about 10 or 15 years before um, everybody moved out and on to bigger and better things. So when you leave Colorado Camp, you just stay on EP-15. Uh, don't take the uh, cutoff to the right to EP-30. Uh, EP-15 will go for a while, and then you're going to merge onto EP-100. You go down that uh, you know mile or two, and off to the right you'll see uh, EP-204, which is the trail up to the uh, Walsh cabin. And that's actually where we are right now. I, I didn't video any of the, the EP-15 or EP-100. It's just a big, wide dirt road. Uh, so again, this is a... Uh, Reasonably easy trail, I think, uh, for a novice rider on a quad shouldn't have any problem. It's a little upside down. The bottom por portion is uh, sort of flat. Uh, the middle portion is where the steep sections are. Uh, and then the uh, top of the mountain at about 4,000, 4,500 feet uh, is also pretty flat. But uh, overall, going up is uh, pretty easy. Coming down some of the steep sections uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Just keep it in, uh, in low gear and take a slow.
So from up here, you've actually got some great views down at the uh, dry lake down there in the Fremont Valley. And then uh, across the valley uh, is the, the Rand Mountains. Uh, if you look off to the right, uh, you can actually sometimes see the, uh, uh, the Jawbone Canyon, Dove Spring area, uh, as well as uh, Highway 14. You can see off to the left there, there's the actual cabin. Uh, this trail is again you know, reasonably flat. Uh, you get to the cabin and you take a look at it, it's actually uh, uh, held down to the mountain with cables going across it. So it does get reasonably windy up here at times, but uh, today's actually a pretty nice day and I'm sure by now Pete is inside with Kevin uh, sharing a beer. Okay, we enjoyed our beer, spent a little bit of time uh, looking at the sights, and now we're headed back down. Now we're going to go back down uh, EP204 to uh, EP100, Mesquite Canyon. We'll turn right and take uh, Mesquite Canyon down, uh, not quite all the way down to the paved highway, uh, because it, it's a little bit more difficult to find a trail down there, but right before that we'll, uh, we'll take a branch off to the uh, left and head into uh, towards Garlock. So a couple of steep downhills, but uh, you know, just go down it slow. It should be no problem. Uh, they actually look uh, worse than they than they are, but uh, I always uh, I always take them slow just to make sure. I actually think the uh, view coming down from the Walsh cabin is better than the one going up. You can see all the way across the El Paso uh, mountains and into the El Paso wilderness. Uh, those mountains way out in the distance, uh, uh, those are actually uh, some of the eastern Sierras. So this is the uh, turn off off of EP100, Mesquite Canyon. If you go straight, you actually hit uh, Red Rock Ransburg Road. Uh, we're going to take this little uh, cut off here. Uh, EP, let's just say there, 826. Uh, just a little uh, double wide uh, trail above the uh, above the road down there. Uh, it's going to head down towards Garlock. Uh, it actually doesn't take you there on a straight shot. You end up having to turn uh, a little bit and go up uh, towards the base of the mountains towards the north. Turn again, go east, uh, but eventually gets you down to uh, Red Rock Transport Road down in the city of Garlock, and you can cross the highway there and pick up a trail along the uh, railroad track. So you can see now uh, the trail uh, actually made a left turn. You can see we're headed back uh, towards the base of the mountains. I'm not sure what this uh, facility uh, is, was, or is going to be, but. Uh, I've never seen it there before. Uh, and then we're going to turn uh, right towards the east, uh, go a ways uh, parallel in the base of the mountains, and then we'll turn right again and head down uh, south towards towards the highway and uh, Old Horse Town of Garlock. So it, uh, it looks like Garlock does have uh, three or four uh, uh, houses that uh, actually are occupied by people. Uh, 
The old ghost town area is fenced off. I'm not sure if there's a way to get in there or not. Uh, and then uh, across the highway, there's a cool old uh, jail building. Uh, right next to that is a small trail that'll take us up uh, towards the uh, railroad tracks, and then there's a crossing underneath the railroad tracks uh, that will get on and make a left turn and parallel those tracks and head across the thing like that. So we crossed underneath the uh, railroad tracks and uh, turned left. You can see the railroad tracks up there on the left. Uh, we're going to follow them for uh, about a mile or two, and, uh, and then you can, uh, we'll actually be across the highway from where we entered the Narrows, uh, and then we're going to turn, turn right, and we're going to head across the valley and directly towards the Rand Mountains. Uh, that's actually the way you would go if you wanted to go into Randsburg itself, um, but right, uh, right when we cross uh, the paved road there before we go up into Randsburg, uh, we're going to make a left, and, and and head towards Highway 395 and back towards camp. Okay, well, we turned uh, right onto R110 and uh, we're in this sort of soft, on the soft road. Um, actually, at time, John, to see there seems to be uh, some kind of a water pipe or something down the middle of this road. And, um, it gets exposed a lot, so you got to pay a little bit of attention if you're on a dirt bike and make sure you, you don't hit that thing, say, on one side or the other. Um, not a lot of whoops right here. It does have a few whooped out sections, but uh, you can pretty much you know, fly across uh, fly across this, and like I said, uh, if you stay on R110, it'll actually take you right up and into the uh, actually uh, living ghost town in Rainsburg. Uh, so there's Pete and uh, Kevin. Uh, this is the paved road into Rainsburg. Uh, so I'm going to meet up with them now, and then we're going to actually uh, make a left and get on uh, another dirt road that's going to take us uh, directly towards Highway 395. So we, uh, we've taken a R44, uh, it's coming up right now to, uh, to the actual paved highway of uh, Highway 395. Uh, we're going to cross the highway, uh, make a right turn on R5 and then another left turn, and that'll take us back towards uh, where we camped in that uh, in, uh, our, uh, RM44, uh, which is across from uh, Toronto Road. So uh, start to finish, this was uh, about a 45 mile loop, uh, uh, rated again as, uh, as pretty easy, uh, but it is a different way to get to the uh, Walsh cabin from, uh, from the east, so I hope you enjoyed.